Okay, today we learned about uh, Coulomb's law, and um, and you can see it's very similar in form, as we mentioned, to um, Newton's law of gravitation, which takes this form here. Uh, the main difference is that we have absolute value signs here. And that's primarily because now we have attraction and repulsion in addition to purely attraction. So we went through some basic examples of that. And this is our value for K. And so, um, but if you notice, we have one value uh, for Q1 and one value for Q2. We, only, we can only deal with two charges. Well, what happens when there are more? Well, it turns out that electrostatic force is additive. It's called superposition of, um, of electric charge. And as it says there, superpose is to place on top of it to add. So, therefore, the force on Q2 due to these two charges can simply be found by calculating Q1, Q2 okay, in the Coulomb law equation um, and adding that to the force between Q2 and Q3. Now, whether you add or subtract is dependent on the geometry of the problem, and that's the importance of the absolute value signs. If you do not have absolute value signs, it's a little tricky to see what's going on. Take, for example, this case here. I've got a minus charge and a positive charge. This for this charge, negative charge, will clearly attract, will clearly try to pull. If the minus sign was fixed, it would pull this to your left. Uh, so that force will be negative. Now, if you didn't have absolute value signs, that would be true. But take a look at the force between Q2 and Q3. These are both positive. If you do not have absolute value signs, you'll get a positive answer. But the force in the geometry here is going to be one of repulsion because they're both positive. So Q2 is going to be forced to move again to your left. So both of those forces, geometrically speaking, should be towards your left. And so the only way to actually calculate that is to see the geometry of the problem and to work with it based on that. Notice now that the force on this charge is going to be due to the force from Q1 which will be negative, that's towards your left. It's going to be, Q1 is going to pull Q3 towards your left. The force, we're going to add that to the force from Q2. Uh, in this case, it's going to be one of repulsion between Q2 and Q3, and Q3 will be forced to move to your right. So those two forces are going to oppose one another. We'll do a real example of that. Now, of course, all of that depends on what these values are. So let's do a real example using this uh, using these cases, and, and there are the charges that we see um, above. We have a negative 1.3 microcoulombs, positive 2.3 microcoulombs, and 1.8, positive 1.8 microcoulombs. We can't use the micro, we can't use the prefix term. We actually have to put the value in there. We only can calculate using coulombs. So let's do the calculation based on Q2. Let's find Find the force on Q2, due to, of course, the other two charts. So the force on Q2 is going to equal the, and the signs have yet to be determined, is going to equal the force on 2 due to 1, uh, plus, and again, the signs will be determined, the force on 2 due to 3. So this will give us our Q1, Q2, Q1, Q2, Q3. That's what we'll, we'll be looking at. And so uh, let's see if we can set that up. So we're going to write, now we're going to use the absolute values, and then we'll determine the signs. So we have now K times Q1, Q2, absolute value, divided by R squared. Now the R is going to be between the distance between 1 and 2. And that's what that means. This means the distance from 1 to 2. And to that, we're going to maybe add or subtract. Um, and this could be positive or negative, but we'll 
we kind of already know, but we'll determine that a little bit later. Uh, K times the force between 2 and charge 3. And again, this is going to be R squared. This is going to be the distance between 2 and 3. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to put that. Now, as we said, now let's, I guess we can, we can do this now. As we said, we can put the signs in now. We know, for instance, that Q1 is going to pull, the force due to charge 1 is going to pull it this way. The force due to charge 3 is going to push it that way so that we can, we can see they're both negative so let's let's install that right now so we're going to have a minus 9 by 10 to the ninth times the absolute value of minus 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6 times 2.3 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by the distance between which is 1.0 meters square and to this we know that just to point out here f the force due to three force between two and three which is the force between two and one this is going to be negative because it's going to your left and so this is also going to be minus minus nine times ten to the ninth absolute value of the charge two which is 2.3 times 10 to the minus 6th times, what is 3? Uh, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6th absolute value divided by the distance between 2 and 3, which we see is 1.8 meters. 1.8 meters squared. And so um, now we have to multiply those values. And that's going to take a little bit of time, but let's get through it. So we're going to, um, I think I'll pause it here for a minute to go through those calculations. Okay, and if you go through those calculations, you'll find that you get a minus 0 0.02691 minus 0 0.0115, uh, the units work out to newtons, of course, you, and I'll show that in a minute. And, uh, and so basically, we're going to add them, 0 0.02691, and we get a minus 0 0.03841 newtons. Uh, this indicates it's a force acting to your left. So it's important to do that. Um, in terms of the units, we have uh, 9 by 10 to the ninth. That's uh, newtons times uh, meters squared divided by coulomb squared times, uh, we're multiplying coulombs by coulomb, so that's coulomb squared. And we're dividing by meters, which we're squaring, so that's meters squared. So that cancels, that cancels, that cancels, and that cancels, and we end up in the unit of newtons. So we end up with a minus 0.03841 newtons. Uh, that's basically how you do this type of problem.